eight weeks, eight champions, and a bunch of runners-up wanting payback. Fly them all back to Argentina to compete for the ultimate title, the champion of champions, and what have you got? A huge number of air miles, a lot of lost luggage, and a 17-hour delay in Madrid. And total wipeout, the final. Buenos Aires, South America, 7,000 miles from home. If you're sensing deja vu, spare a thought for the finalists who've already done the world's hardest obstacle course and now they've got to do it all over again. Only the best of the best have been invited back. There's another £10,000 at stake, but the honour of being series champion is priceless. Let the final commence. Welcome to Total Wipeout, the final. Now, before you write to the BBC about us wasting your licence fee on this lavish set, don't worry, it's not actually as big or expensive as it looks. It's, uh, look, see, it's quite small. Yeah, we haven't been lavish at all. Over the last, oh, it's still wet. Over the last eight weeks, we've seen 160 competitors fall, bounce and swim. But it all boils down to this. What a journey it's been to get here. 160 contestants have shuffled excitedly through the total wipeout doors. Eight left in glory. There was Jumping Jack, Gymnast Rachel, Cowman Arrow, Unassuming Ricky, Nervous Anthony, Rowing John, Crouching Tiger Hidden Adam, and Amanda's favourite James. Plus a whole load of runners up who boarded the plane home in despair. But now they're back and desperate to be crowned series champion. For some it's a chance to add another 10 grand check to the one they've already won. For the others it's a chance to regain lost pride. And this is what they face. The qualifier, we've made it harder. The sweeper, it's always been hard. Dizzy dummies, chuffing hard. And the wipeout zone. Diamond-coated tungsten carbide tipped hard. That's a lot of course for one person. But someone's got to win and become the champion of champions. Honestly, I'm so excited. I think I might nip to the lavatory. Nope, I'm not going anywhere. I've got the best seat in the house. Well, technically it's the only seat in the house. Let's get straight over to Amanda to get things going on the qualifier with our first returnee. Dan from Brighton who was runner-up on his last trip to Argentina. What have you been doing since you've been home to prepare for not being runner-up again? Well, Amanda, I've been, you know, working out a bit, working on the old guns. Before and after, big difference. Old Dan on the left isn't even in colour. Plus, his head's too big for a headband. I'm ridiculously confident at the moment, Amanda, about uh, showing all these best of the best how it's done, you know? Last time we've got the silver, now watch me go for gold! Okay, the first of the best is off with an innovative knee scoot approach. Looks a bit nervous, and he should be, because the first of today's obstacles is something a little bit special created just for the champions. This is no ordinary rope over the mud, it's the tight rope of terror over the mud. Mission cross it. This is going to be almost impossible, I'd say. Good attempt, though, from Return of the Headband Dan. Second chance to shine. Joe! Oh! <laughs> Nearly jumps clear. That's determined. On to the sucker punch now. Dan didn't enjoy this much last time. <laughs> At least Amanda enjoyed it this time. No introduction needed to the next part of the qualifier. If you do need one, it's just the big balls. Oh, obviously. There they are. How many balls will Dan make? The best of the best. Here we go. One. Yeah. Oops. Yeah, it was quite a dramatic one, but still only one. Anybody else disappointed already? I thought maybe I'll have learnt. No? Okay, one. Good. 
On to the last obstacle then, it's an unwelcome return for the uncompromising Lunar Landing. Land on there. Will Return of the Headband Dan make it? Oh, yes! What a great finish to the first run of the day. 1 minute 38, certainly competitive. If Dan's time is anything to go by, I think we could be set for some pretty incredible performances today. Let's have the next one then. Who is it? Oh, go on, give me a clue. I can't catch me, I'm the gingerbread man. Oh yeah, no Gary Barlow Andy. There he is! Oh Come sorry on. mate, I've kind of spoiled the surprise a bit there. Now, coming third last time around means Andy has to put in a good performance if he's going to do better. So, onto the tightrope of terror. Oh, clever boy. Why didn't Return of the Headband Dan do it like that? That works. Oh, hang on. Yeah, maybe that's why it's, it doesn't work. Oh dear, making a meal of the mud, which is strongly discouraged by the on-site paramedics. The Sucker Punch next. Double punched! Not a vintage performance so far from Andy. On the plus side, though, it is a vintage performance by the Sucker Punch. Quality stuff. Always a champion in itself. Andy has been in serious training for this. He's been eating cereal four times a day and given up takeaway food. Oh, still making a very large splash, though, Andy. Need to eat less cereal. <laughs> See what I mean? No Gary Barlow. Andy hauls himself up onto the lunar landing. Hurrying up, not appearing to be part of his keep fit regime. This is not looking like a champion of champions time. Is this slowed down? No, it's... Okay, well he swings. Slowly. And misses. Slowly. Oh. Chicken town main for Andy. Where's Andy? Yeah, at the bottom of the leaderboard. And with a time of 3 minutes 7 seconds, highly likely to stay somewhere around about there. Right, what have they got next? Oh yes, from two finalists who lost last time around to the first of the Total Wipeout Champions. Arguably the most surprising winner of the series, he holds not only the title of champion, but also that of the most timid competitor ever seen. 18-year-old trainee flight attendant, Nervous Anthony. Who's there? Now the one thing I do remember from you the last time is you, you weren't very confident. Can I just ask what I'm doing? The fact that you've already won Total Wipeout, surely you're much more confident this time, are you? Um, no. What are you most afraid of here today? Is there anything that, uh, that you're scared of? The thing that's scaring the most is, you know, these big guys, you know, the really muscly ones with arms bigger than my head. What, like one of these? It's unassuming Ricky, another Total Wipeout champion. Now, Ricky, uh, you didn't really have very much to say about yourself the last time you were here. When you watch me, you believe the hype and you better witness the fitness! The biggest competition, I'll probably say, is my own ego. <laughs> The hype is back, baby! I'm bigger! I'm better! I'm faster! I'm stronger! Yeah, yeah, whatever. Shouty, shouty, shout. I've heard enough of that. Get on with it, Ricky. So the mild-mannered Man Mountain sets off on his quest to claim victory once again. He's up and out and onto the tire. Oh! 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 oh. oh. Someone call casualty! For me! That's not pretty, Ricky. Oh, the Sucker Punch. Here we go. Oh, hello. Fancy footwork. Rattle the Sucker Punch to the ground. Yes. Oh, almost balletic. Or maybe not. And assuming Ricky not only a total wipeout champion, also a disco dancing on the Sucker Punch champion too. Look at that! Look at these moves! Back to Nervous Anthony. I've forgotten about him. Right, he's waiting to start. No, are those his legs? What a knotted string, I don't know. Last time I flew around the course, this time I'm going to leave you on in departures. That's what he says to all the passengers. Whoa, great start from Nervous Anthony. Onto the tightrope of terror. Briefly. Right, the balls. Oh! Making good distance there, vertically. Just the Lula landing left. He overshoots and then undershoots. 
Nervous Anthony posts a time of 2 minutes 27 seconds, which might just be good enough. Only time will tell. Back to one of the many things that Anthony's nervous of, unassuming Ricky. On to the big balls now. Remember, these are the best of the best. Catapulted into the pool by big ball number two. <laughs> Just the lunar landing to go, and if he makes it, I'm sure we'll never hear the end of it. You like that, baby? Whoa! I had a feeling that was coming. The next contestant is gymnast Rachel, the first and only girl to become a total wipeout champion. In fact, I think she's earned a nickname upgrade, Arise Queen Rachel. <laughs> Rachel, we're not worthy, we're not worthy. Well, I'm just taking over where the Spice Girls left off, Frank. <laughs> so, Queen Rachel sets off. Time for a dose of girl power. You'd have to climb that bit, Rachel. What? Ooh! Someone's got a hidden talent. First lady champion, first one across the tightrope. Truly regal from Queen Rachel. That's magnificent. Balance, poise, speed. All useless on the sucker punch, but she's doing incredibly storming past the gloves. Is she gonna make it? Whoa! Taking the pain. She's cleared everything so far then. What about the boys? Here we go. One, two, three. Oh, oh. <laughs> kind of. Trying to wear the fourth one as a hat. Another first for Rachel. The first person to get a face entirely absorbed by the ball. Look at that, it's gone. Can Queen Rachel crown this run with a perfect landing? Oh, maybe she can, maybe she can. Oh, oh, oh yes, she can. No, oh. No. No. But 1 minute 44, a majestic time from Queen Rachel. Let's see where that puts her on the leaderboard. That nifty run from Queen Rachel puts her in second place behind return of the headband Dan and just ahead of unassuming Ricky. Nervous Anthony is in fourth, whilst no Gary Barlow Andy has the slowest time so far today. Next on the qualifier, two Geordies, two Chrises. Both of them were runners up and both are fighting back. First to go is 45 year old Karate Chris. Karate Chris! Subtitles, please. Yeah, okay. No idea. Karate Chris's eight-year-old son, Daniel, is very proud of his dad coming back for the champion show. Well, I should think so, too. Doing proud. Chris from the Philippines should have absolutely no problem being nimble across the tightrope. How does she make that? Oh, well, let's see if she's right. Oh, yeah. Useful. <laughs> Karate and tightrope walking are different, Amanda. Trying again. <laughs> <laughs> Let's look at the positives. His hair's not muddy yet. Chris back on track. On the, no, no yeah, oh. his eyes are muddy. Back to the top of the course now. The other Chris, knockout Chris, is waiting. Last time I went down in the final round, I won my happy ending. Now that is a shout out. He is quick. Chris is a welterweight boxer. Couldn't be more at home than he is on the sucker punch. Look at that. Dodging, ducking, weaving. Well, after that, I'm expecting big things, Chris. Onto the balls. Here we go. Yeah. Ooh. Ah. Ah. That is how you do it. I can assure you, no special effects were used there. That is just simple ball crossing genius. I, I did it a bit like that. Just the lunar landing to go for a perfect run, then. Oh! Yeah, just, just misses it. Chris becomes another casualty of the day. Ah-ha-ha! Oh! 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 But his time of 1.21 is the fastest qualifier we've seen all series. He's so happy he's crying, look. Yeah, I, th I think that's why he's crying. In a high voice. <laughs> Chris's balls were amazing. Ball crossings don't get much better than that. In fact, it's usually much, much worse.
let's see how 20-year-old student Tiny Kelly plans on crossing the balls today. Yeah, that would be the Kelly I remember, all right. Last time the attempt went slightly wrong because I was covered in mud and just totally slipped off. Well, just, you know, try and not get covered in mud and that might do the trick. Yeah, it might do. It might help me. <laughs> Maybe little one back to win it big! Oh, she's covered in mud. Bad sign. Kelly's tactic for getting over the big red balls this time is that she's going to backflip across them. It's ambitious. Wow! <laughs> <laughs> this is Farmer Benny. He struggled his way to the final last time around and came in second, but he's been in training back at the farm. Oh, it is. Hi, well, Amanda. Hey. Tried to take it a bit easy, yeah. I lay up for as much as I could. <laughs> Tell you the old lying in the meadows ploy, it works a treat. Yeah, yeah, and the and the daisies. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Laying up in the daisies wasn't the best training after all. No. Next is clown, sorry, circus performer Gary, who narrowly missed out on victory last time around. So how are you going to avoid being a clown today, Gary? Well, the first thing I've done was get rid of the baggy trousers. Coming so close the first time, I know it's something I can do, and I'm going to do it while beating 21 of the best. Well, good luck to you. No clowning around today, then. Got to be serious. Watch this, Belfast boy! Bikes through this! OK, what will his strategy be? Second ball! Ah! <laughs> Opting to miss out the first ball altogether, and then miss the third and the fourth balls as well. Common mistake. That. <laughs> so while there are hundreds of ways to get across these balls, there are millions of ways to fall off them, even if you're a champion. Exhausting this for me, sitting here on the stool. What a competition this is turning out to be, but for some of our returning finalists, it's about more than just winning. Next to go is one of the finest champions Total Wipeout has ever seen. Impressive, masterful, strong, if you like that sort of thing, rowing John. <gasps> and having lost to John last time round, here's someone who's desperate to knock the rower off his pedestal. It was easy. It's Rob the Tiger. Rob is annoyingly good looking and all the girls fancied him, so for that I actually hated him. I've come back here to settle one score and that is to beat Jonathan. The inner tiger is going to come out again. He's going down. The rubber drone is back to sell some old scores. Ooh, you want to get that scene too. Okay. So Rob the Tiger sets off. Watch me do it! One more time! His nemesis rowing John away too. The John versus Rob rivalry has obviously been festering over the last few weeks. Just like the mud under those tight ropes there. Here we go. Ooh, ooh, not bad from John. I mean, not brilliant. But, but Rob is out to prove something today. Oh, taking his time. Setting up it. Oh, and he has. He's proved how difficult it is to do the tightrope and get out of Argentinian mud. <laughs> there you go, mission complete. Ooh, and there is conclusive proof. Rob, very thorough. Just testing once again how difficult it is. Now, I think that's rowing John under all the mud. Yeah, it is. Up to the big balls. Oh, look, it is John. Yeah, I was right. Slightly less enthusiastic approach from Rob the Tiger. Come on, the rubber drone! What? You're making me preserve nicknames. It's not bad, is it? Right, the lunar landing. He's overcooked it, and the tiger's wet. Won't like that. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Rowing John storms home in an impressive two minutes. I think Rob's a bit soft, didn't he? Uh, bless him. But, uh, you know, we all love him anyway. You know, everyone loves a loser. 
says Mr. Popular. Unfortunately, though, Rob the Tiger's time isn't looking good enough to get him through to the next round. There are, of course, worse animals you can pay yourself to than a tiger, like a cow. He chose to do this. Champion Towman Aaron is back. What is it with all the animals today? Last time this Mooney Moo won. Now watch this bull charge into action. Aaron to the tightrope then. Oh, you see, some lateral thinking from the cowman. Mind he doesn't get his bell tangled. He's moving along. That's got to hurt the old others there. Yeah. Has he also got an alternative ball strategy then? Bounce and landing. Oh, this is looking good. Looking not so good. <laughs> A quick time though. The lunar landing. Come on, Aaron swings, and that's a great landing and a pretty good time. Yeah, yeah, baby. <laughs> yeah, he's got confused with the whole animal thing. That's a terrible celebration. I'm getting really tired of this animal theme. Can we? Time to find someone normal, like 33-year-old Kate from Bristol. So, what's the reaction been like from home? They're quite happy for when it's all over, because I've turned into a bit of a psycho gym bunny. Oh, please, no more! Bye-bye. <laughs> oh. Now, professional face painter Painty Katie is back to make sure that this time around she wins. Losing to Queen Rachel by only nine seconds hurt. She wants to make her two daughters even prouder. Ooh! <gasps> That's a girl. Go oh. on, Katie. Nearly there. Ooh. Ooh. This is it. Oh, great job. Your girls will be doubly proud now. What a fantastic finish. And a time of 1.55 should see her comfortably through to the sweeper. Painty Katie becomes a second contestant to cross the big balls today. Stuff, but can I see Chris's once more just for me? Look at that. There you go. <laughs> I didn't think that could be done. On to the leaderboard. Knockout Chris's run sees him on top with an astounding 1 minute 21. Painty Katie takes fifth spot, followed by Rowing John. Cowman Aaron and Gary the Clown are seventh and eighth. Currently, Farmer Benny, Tiny Kelly, and Karate Chris fill the remaining sweeper spots. As a result, no Gary Barlow, Andy, and Rob the Tiger have dropped off the bottom. Unlucky chaps. Start to my friends, to my family, my mom, my dad, CJ. Next up is someone who holds two so total to wipeout records, on and on Donovan. My gangs are so out to everybody, yeah? I love you all. Just, just keep your eyes on me, okay? He had the love longest shout out in total wipeout history. How's that? It's incredibly long. The other record he holds is worst swimming technique ever seen from a finalist, which is why he came in third. I hope he's been practicing. Okay, just because I can't swim. Doesn't mean I can't win. Well, that's one of the problems, Sultan. That was short and sweet. We joined Donovan at the tightrope of terror. Already been on the course longer than knockout Chris took to complete it. Here we go. No. Looking for the positives, at least it's not his swimming that's the problem this time round. But with limited time available before night falls, I think we should probably move on. Let's welcome back some of the most memorable finalists, including Olympic Les, who took home the bronze and the headache a few weeks ago. Only popped out for a paper. And Crouching Tiger Hidden Adam. I flow like a gentle breeze, but I am strong like granite. Who flowed like a gentle breeze all the way to gold. Then there's Jumping Jack, who was the first total wipeout champion of this series. Do you think you have what it takes to do it all over again? Yeah. Come on, get the confidence going. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man of few words. Maybe he and Donovan should compare notes. Here he goes. Ooh. Wow! Crazy leg action from Jumping Jack. Yeah, Les's tactic needs work. Pretending he's a torpedo. That's going to be another headache. Right, on the tight rope, our oldest contestant today is going to have to get a wriggle on if he's going to beat the young ones. Adam next on the tight rope of terror. 
Oh, and that's how you do it. Oh. Obviously been putting in a lot of hard physical training for the final. Well, I've been doing a lot of praying and also meditation and yoga exercises because I believe with this course it's 70% mental and 30% physical. Now that our chakras are centred, let's see how Jumping Jack and Olympic Les are doing on the balls. This is it. Come on, chaps, good luck. What a ridiculous attempt from Jack! Les hasn't quite got to grips with these newfangled balls. And Olympic Les, he's got stamina. He's got determination. He's got the rope too low down. <laughs> Olympic Les, unfortunately, fails to qualify. Bad luck. That's not meditating, that's just showing off. Crouching Tiger hidden Adam here. And a great finish. But despite all the mental preparation, with that time, Adam's chances of qualifying are looking a little unsteady. Jumping Jack now. Jumping Jack definitely going through to the next round though with that time, proving that it's better not to be 70% mental, but 100% physical and 0% verbal. <laughs> Talking of verbal, Donovan making this look very painful. Come on, Donovan, you can do it. Come on, this is the champion of champions. Oh. No, now he's got further to swim. With hindsight, I was being a little overconfident. Maybe you can't do it, Donovan. No. Can Donovan stay out of the water on the lunar landing? Yes. Oh, yes, he, yes. No. Four minutes, one second is the slowest time of the day, but at least it was longer than his shout out this time, so he did us all a favor. Thank you, Donovan, and well done. <laughs> Here's someone who's hoping to do much better than Donovan. Remember Alex, the landscape gardener who lost out to Nervous Anthony. For a reason I can't recall, his nickname was Gassy Alex. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was... For everyone on my show, I'll make... For everyone on my show, I'll give it a go. This isn't going well. For everyone who's on my show, I'll give it a go. You'll laugh out loud, but I'll make you proud. Woo! You see? He's a trier. Hope his qualifier run is better than his poetry, but he's away. Woohoo! He's having fun, our Alex. Amanda's been at the Argentinian moonshine again, honey. Oh! <laughs> Alex gets winded. <laughs> okay, the big ball's now full of air. A bit like Alex. Ah. He's off. Oh, he's gone. He's out again. The swim to the ladder now. on with it, Alex. It's a competition. Mind on burping again. Too much information, <laughs> Alex. Swing it, baby. Oh, we know you are. The lunar landing. Oh, dear. Taking longer than three minutes means Gassy Alex is not going to qualify either. Bad luck. King of the castle! Hey, I'm the king of the castle! <laughs> no, I don't ask him. Oh, is he? Where's the castle? Made us no, Alex, we're all laughing. Just, just inside. Only three contestants left, and the next young lady has a point to prove. Do some damage! Scary Claire didn't do a lot of damage coming in third last time round, but she's back, and this time she might do some damage. Possibly to herself. I fell in the final hurdle last time, but I never make the same mistake twice! Okay, long as they're funny, we don't mind what mistakes you make. Oh, ho, ho. in the mud, first time. Luckily, she never makes the same mistake twice. Oh, well, that was just a fib then, wasn't it? She fell in the mud again. Exactly the same as the last mistake. Slightly more painful, no funnier. Ow. 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 Yeah, that about covers it. It does seem that by making the qualifier ah, more difficult for our finalists, we've also made it a bit more painful. I didn't design it. It wasn't Now, meet nuclear safety engineer James. A 
again. Total Wipeout's very own Homer Simpson. The big brain on you. <laughs> well, you know, it's got to be used for something. <laughs> yeah, use that big brain to do better than second place this time, James. Use it, go on, use it now. Oh! Yeah. Too top heavy. That's due to his massive brain, you see, centre of gravity too high. Can we stop watching this now? It's... The sucker punches have administered a fair amount of the old agony too. Oh, right in the cheek. Scary Claire damaged the sucker punch with her face. But she laughs in the face of pain to finish in just over two minutes. So let's hope the sweeper's kinder to her. Woohoo! Wow. I'm in pain. Oh, are you all right? Yes. Been a lot of distress on today's qualifier, but the prize for the most painful fall goes to Nuclear James. Remember, James? No pain, no gain. Yeah. Today's final contestant is the man who Amanda has been most excited to see back in Argentina. He holds the record for the fastest ever wipeout zone. And he also holds the key to Amanda's heart. Strong, powerful, handsome. It's her future husband. Not that he knows it. British Army officer and Amanda's favourite, James. Right, Amanda! Get down on the girls and give me Prestos now! Ten Prestos, go on, on the floor I sense a change in nickname is needed. Meet Drill Sergeant James. That's not good enough, that's one Prestos! Little does he know, she likes that. That's it. Go that's one Prestos. Nine more to go. Qualifier! My tank could crush you, as will I! Yeah, listen, mate, not all girls go for that aggression thing. It doesn't always work. You can crush me any time, James. Amanda, obviously, yeah. Onto the tightrope of terror. Oh, it's OK, Amanda, he didn't damage his face. Despite all of his success, Drill Sergeant James is yet to conquer the balls. <laughs> Let's see if the perfect man can execute the perfect landing. Oh, he looks suave when he falls. OK, so he fell off everything but still managed to complete the course in an amazing time of 1 minute 33 seconds. Again, no obstacles complete. Good work, soldier. <laughs> Round one of the champion show, dismissed. What a way to finish the final qualifier of this series. Time to meet the greatest lineup the sweeper has ever faced. Knockout Chris still holds on to the top spot, but Drill Sergeant James knocks return of the headband Dan into third. Queen Rachel and unassuming Ricky are fourth and fifth, with Jumping Jack bounding into sixth. Scary Claire takes ninth position, and it appears the gods are looking favorably on Crouching Tiger Hidden Adam, who squeezes his way into the final 12. So the best of the best just became the best of the best of the best. But now the best of the best of the... you, you get it, must be narrowed down from 12 five by the sweeper's evil twin, the Crusher. Finally, something six foot five drill sergeant James might struggle with. On podium one, it's drill sergeant James. Sweeper, you are undisciplined. You will stand to attention. You will obey me! Getting all shouty again. On two is knockout Chris. James, you'll need your army to beat me! Yeah, he doesn't look all that worried, Chris. On podiums three and four is return of the headband Dan and Cowman Aaron. <laughs> Save it for your passport photo. On five is unassuming Ricky. I cannot believe these 11 other jokers have got through to this stage. I'm Ricky Hype and I'm... When you could do that in real life. Podium six, seven and eight are the homes of Gary the Clown. Action. <laughs> rowing John and Crouching Tiger Hidden Adam. With balance and grace, I'm going to win this race. What's he doing? Scary Claire's on nine. I don't know why you call it last man standing, because us girls are going to show you how it's done. I hear you, sister. On podiums 10 and 11 are Painty Katie and... Guess who's back? It's Jumping Jack. Completing the lineup on podium 12, it's Rachel. You boys better show some respect, because you are looking at the queen of the sweeper. You go, Queen Rachel. So, the girls are challenging the boys. 
The boys are challenging the other boys, and the crusher will shortly be challenging all of them. Time to go back to Amanda to get this champion sweeper started. It's the sweeper. Are you all ready? This is going to be carnage. Oh, you're joking. I've got to turn around. Where, how far do I got to turn around to? Three, two, one. OK, so here we go. The Crusher won't stop spinning until it's knocked 11 of the finalists from their podiums. Champion jumping from the champions. Remember, each time it goes round, it gets faster and the bars get closer together. It means it's a challenge for both teensy and tall competitors alike. Every single jump for everyone that does parkour now! Woo! It's really picking up speed now. <laughs> Going higher. They're showing their metal. These champions aren't budging. Seriously impressive stuff. That's what you'd expect from experienced finalists, I guess. Is that all you've got, baby? Come on! Pride goes before a fall. It's almost <laughs> as if Amanda wants Ricky to fall off his podium. Can't imagine why. Still no faultless. We could be here forever. Crouching <laughs> <laughs> tiger hidden Adam has gone. Tried so hard to get his balance back, but just tipped himself in. First off, <laughs> not good. Not good at all. I believe it was my destiny to leave in this round. Yeah, blame your destiny or wind. Back to it. Will others join in the falling down craze that Adam started? Always oh, catching on. Katie's down. She needs to get back up before the pressure comes round again. And she does. Great recovery from Painty Katie. Still only Adam down. Oh, Katie's down again. Not getting back up this time. No, I got over it once and fell down. Managed to get back up. But I just couldn't do it again. It was just too high. Shins and face. Ow. Five more need to fall before we have our dizzy dummy contenders. This is pretty incredible stuff. The bar has been raised by these champions. Just as it's been raised by Eduardo. Faster and higher than normal. You can hear the faint sound of toes touching sweeper. Yeah, it's getting high now. Oh, and that's Rachel gone. Oh, oh. monumental sweep. It certainly was. The queen is gone. <laughs> it just got so higher and higher, and it, it was so scary trying to jump over it. Oh, so not so much queen of the sweeper. Maybe just lady in waiting. Nine left. We need to lose four more. This is amazing stuff. That's Aaron down, and now it's a pile-up. Four down in quick succession. What, what actually happened there? Let's have a look. Cam and Aaron doesn't jump. That puts off unassuming Ricky, Shane. Gary the Clown makes it over, but can't quite stay up. And then Rowan John joins them all for a nice swim. It hit me with such a force that it just you know, made me fly off. And I took some people out with me, and I'm really, really sorry to Ricky. I'm, I'm so sorry, my friend. I'm absolutely fuming I got knocked off. It wasn't even my fault. He couldn't jump. He was a little fairy. That boy better stay well out of my path. Scary friends there. Cam and Aaron summing up the situation perfectly. Gary the Clown and Rowan John must be disappointed too. Oh, God, I'll just be humble and losing and well, enjoy the rest of the games. Watch them. I still can't believe I got so close to making Dizzy Dummies just one spot out. That was brutal. But we have the final five, so it's back to the action. Claire's safe. Just. Jack's not! <laughs> oh! Oh, here we go again. I can't keep up. Jack gets knocked down. And then James, knockout Chris, flips and takes out Return of the Headband Dan. And I think that might be the best pilot we've ever seen on Total Wipeout. 
All of which means that our last man standing is a woman. Congratulations to Scary Claire, who is our champion sweeper champion. Of course, sweeper gets the last laugh. It always does. Not only are you the last woman standing, but you're the last woman standing amongst the champions. So you're the champion sweepster. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Obviously, this one's my game. Just shame this isn't the final, eh? <laughs> I'm not 100% sure, but I think we've now whittled the wannabe winners down to five. Or it could be two. To be honest, I couldn't really keep up with that round. But now, onto the dizzy dummies. If you thought the sweeper was tough, then you were right. But this is also tough. And to make it tougher, we've brought back an old friend. Remember these. <laughs> Way back in the mists of time, there was an obstacle so hard that people dared not speak its name. And because it is a silly name, the Teeter Totters. An obstacle, if not a name, fit for champions. And if they manage them, it's 40 more seconds spinning, followed by the hellish donuts. On each run, we lose the contestant that comes in last, and thus five become three. It's the champion's dizzy dummies. Are you all ready? No. <laughs> that was a champion no. Three, two, one! So who are the Dizzy Dummies staking a claim for the title of series champion? First, it's the strongest, handsomest and shoutiest contestant Total Wipeout and Amanda has ever seen. Get down on the ground and give me fast us now! It's Drill Sergeant James. Next is the man that proves you shouldn't create nicknames based on removable items of clothing. I'm ridiculously confident at the moment. Return of the headband, Dan. He's ginger. He's bouncy. Guess who's back? It's Jumping Jack. He leapt through the sweeper and into Dizzy Dummies. Can he bounce all the way? Scary Claire was the last woman standing. I never make the same mistake twice. Let's hope you don't. For all womankind. And the amazing knockout Chris is hoping to make it into the final round. Without going down for the count. It's probably worse now they know what to expect. Here we go. First off the mark is knockout Chris, who's straight on to the teeter totters, hotly followed by Drill Sergeant James. Again, Chris is the first to jump, but James is scarily close behind. Oh, James just beats Chris across, but both are safe for this round. That's amazing. Look how James and Chris make our near impossible obstacle look, well, unimpossible. Possible, that's the word. They made it look easy, whereas Claire, Jack, and Dan are struggling to even get started. Okay, Dan makes a leap for it. He's away. The others need to catch up. Someone has got to be eliminated here. <laughs> oh, wow! A jump from Dan! But the others are right on his tail. Oh, this is so close! It certainly is. No, oh, that is close. And who's out? I don't know. This is going to need a replay. All three of them made it across together. So what do we do here? Jack landed last, but Dan and Claire were struggling to get up. This will all come down to the rules of the competition. Anybody know what they are? Amanda. Any idea? the closest finish to Dizzy Dummies we have ever seen on the show. The rules of this game are that you have to be on your feet to complete, okay? So I can tell you right now that the last person to be on their feet was Claire. I'm really sorry, darling. It's going through your head right now. Oh, I should have stood up. Okay. <laughs> I was just trying to get to the end of the platform and I, yeah. Hard luck, Claire. You've been a champion in our eyes all day. Oh, this is total wipeout. It's not supposed to be genuinely emotional. Claire was indeed the last to her feet. We've never seen such a close finish. That is tough. Actually moved by this. Thank goodness for that klaxon. I was genuinely welling up there. It's dispersed the moment. So the four boys are back in the dizzy dummy. Round and round it goes. Where it stops, nobody knows. Or where their lunch is. To be honest, 
if it stops, nobody knows. Oh, it has, right, good, and they're off. Knock out Chris, living up to his name. <laughs> Chris would have been rubbish on play school. Should we go to the square window? No, we'll just headbutt the wall instead. Chris may have a sore head, but he also has the lead, closely followed by... Guess who? It'll be James. Oh, back to the start for Chris. Drill Sergeant James takes over the lead then. Oh, but not for long. So we'll return to the headband Dan, be first across the finish line. Again, no. Oh, and now Jack's in. So it's back to the start for all our competitors. This is less of a race and more of a series of false starts. Oh, Chris. Fastest in the qualifier. Yeah, fastest in the qualifier and a little oh. bit rubbish on the donuts. Oh, this is more like it. James makes it to the last donut. And he succeeds. Making him our first contestant in the final of the final. So the battle for the two remaining places is on. Oh! oh. Dan falls in oh. whilst doing a jumping jack. How ironic. Chris now makes it to the second donut. And onto the third. Just one more leap to go. Can he make it now to the wipeout zone? Oh. Oh. Almost! This is painful to watch. And he's across by sheer determination. So we're just one finalist short of the wipeout zone. Will it be Return of the Headband Dan or Jumping Jack? At the moment, Dan's in front. What a battle. Tension's unbearable. We've got a real competition here. He can take his time, but Jack's not far behind. Onto the last donut. Dan looks exhausted. Come on, Dan, you can do it. But so could Jack. Jump, Dan. Jack, jump. Somebody jump. Finally, Dan's yeah! through. So Dan is our final finalist. Jumping Jack is out. Oh, Jack, talk to me, because you're standing on that donut behind Dan and all you had to do was jump on it behind him, knock him off, and you just proved that you could finish. I just, uh, I don't know, I just couldn't do it, because, I don't know, he's a good guy, and I just couldn't do it to him. I prefer to have let him tried and fallen than me knocking him off. Oh, you're still a champion in my eyes, Jack. Well done. I'm going to be sick. So there it is, a carpenter, an industrial radiographer and a soldier. No, that's not a Village People tribute act. That's the final three in the wipeout zone. Dan, Chris and James. Actually, was there an industrial radiographer in the Village People? No, nope, it was a policeman. There's no need to ask them how much a place in the champion's wipeout zone means. But the structure of this show dictates that they're going to tell us anyway. Time to salute the final three. To be back here again feels very surreal. Excited about facing the wipeout zone. It's all the lights, the fire. Feel like you're in a Hollywood movie. I feel very privileged and uh, quite on it. I felt the pieces on the last one, but this time I'm confident I'm going to really go for it. Chris is quick, fast, nimble, light. It's a copy of me, really. <laughs> that Chris character is an absolute ninja. He can pull it out of the bag. Yeah! Tonight, they want to be me. Yeah! I want this more than, than any of them could five times over. Dan, absolute hero. He surprised us all. He's probably surprised himself. I'm not expecting too much. I've got um, British Army to get through to try and win that money. James is a machine. It's like the living Terminator. I think we need to check whether he's actually got blood running through his veins and not petrol. To be called the Terminator, I'm actually quite chuffed at that. If I manage to repeat what I did last time, I think I've got it in the bag. I think tonight will be the closest final that Total Wipeout has ever seen. It was amazing and emotional last time. This time's almost better. Up against the best of the best. 
proved a few people wrong. Yes! Gonna make everyone proud tonight, 100%. This would be my greatest achievement if I was to become the champion. I really want the happy ending in life, really do. As an officer, we're assessing we leaders of men, and I'd love to continue my leadership by becoming the leader of Total Wipeout Champions. For Queen and Country. So the last eight weeks have all been leading to this. Oh, this. This is just me sitting on a stool talking to a cheap podium. Actually, what is this thing for? No, it's all been leading to this, the Wipeout Zone, the final. Watch it. Never before in the history of Total Wipeout have we had a final that has meant this much. Hang tight, because this is the Champions Wipeout Zone. And Dan is first to go. Dan, then, is the first ever contestant to take on the Wipeout Zone twice. So everyone, back home. Dan, the man's going to make you proud. Come on, bring it on. And so it begins. Last time Dan attempted this part of the course, he was beaten by cowman Aaron. With such strong competition waiting in the wings, he knows he's going to have to give it his all this time. Up onto the grease beam, he approaches the barrels. Oh, it slipped! His time will be the benchmark. He needs to get a move on to stand a chance against the other finalists, and he's going the wrong way right now. Oh no, oh, he's back in the water. This, this is not good for the final of finals. A misplaced jump leaves Dan bombarded with barrels and with all that grease on the slope, he finds himself in a near impossible position. He makes a quick recovery before any more barrels can be released. Oh, all right, finally. Onto the monkey bars. He can't afford any more slip-ups after that tricky start. I suspect he'll need a clear round to stay in this. Well, he's cleared the monkey bars, the spinner. Oh, he lands well on the spinner, but a quick exit is what's needed to earn a quick time. Ooh, that is a great job. Yes, he's across. OK, he's doing much better now. This could still be an excellent time. Onto the brusher. Oh, no, that's not good. The brushers are match for even the best of them. He knows the quality of contestant he's up against. He's just got the launch pads to go. He's got to move quickly if he's going to set a winning time. Plays it carefully. Ooh, almost. Yep. Just one more jump. And he's across. Return of the headband, Dan, sets the time to beat. Two minutes, 32 seconds. But when you're facing the best of the best, you can't really afford any slip-ups. Will that be good enough? I feel proud to get as far as I have. I've taken myself to places I didn't even know I could go. And you should be proud because your time tonight was two minutes and 32 seconds. But you never know. Miracles happen. Hopefully we'll get one tonight. It might just have to be a miracle because here comes knockout Chris. The last time he was here, he narrowly lost out to Crouching Tiger Hidden Adam. Wipe out here! He's already crossed the balls in style. Let's see if he can bring some of that swagger to the wipeout zone. He's in and swimming. At speed. Chris will be at an early advantage if he can speedily cross these barrels then. Clears the first, the second, the third. Promising start for Chris. This is just the beginning, but that's looking neat, controlled and fast. Monkey bars, tough at the best of times, with water pouring from above and an intimidating drop below. They're worse, but Chris doing an excellent job. Way ahead of Dan's time already. Smooth jump onto the spinner. Chris is making this look easy. Oh, and a perfect landing. It's like he's done this before, which, well, he has. Oh, and the pressure is his undoing. Chris tries to shuffle between the giant bristles of the brusher, just gets caught. Could these next two leaps be the leaps of a champion? What? Well, they certainly look like them. That was 
Well, an impressive finish for Chris in a staggering time. That's quite a challenge Chris has laid down to James. This final is heating up. Remember, Chris doesn't know how Dan did, so let's go over to Amanda to break the news. Absolutely chuffed with that, absolutely chuffed. You guys have been unbelievable tonight. You have both been runners up once before. And I can tell you right now, Dan, I'm afraid you're not gonna get a chance to know what it's like to be champion because Chris, your time is faster. Dan, go join the rest. Chris, you know what this means. This means that yours is now the time to beat. I know the lads are monster, there, but hopefully I've done enough. What an incredible performance from Chris. Only one second off the course record. A record which was set by a certain drill sergeant, James, who just happens to be next. You couldn't write this stuff. But you could. Might make a good book. Who'd own the rights if I did? I'll call my agent later, because this is going to be brilliant. So James has to match or beat his own wipeout zone record of one minute, ten seconds to become the champion of champions. Wipeout zone, one more time! I am so excited at this point. If anyone can do it, then this man can, and he has before. So here we go. Remember, he's got no idea what he has to do to be crowned the ultimate champion. The pressure's on, he's just going to give it his very best shot. Oh, oh, oh! Taking the barrel run quite carefully, he won't want to fall off, but then he can't afford to be slow either. The monkey bars. Give me a dodgeball, Amanda, I'll throw it. <laughs> Chris really wants this. But so does James, and he's taking his two bars at a time. Onto the spinner. Oh, a slip, but somehow James hangs on. And he makes it off as well. This is so close. This could be the perfect run. No! Oh! This is going to the wire. He needs to recover quickly. Every second counts now. Can he match Chris's prowess on the launch pads? He's going to need to. Oh, it looks like he can. He's done it. What a performance. Mission accomplished for Drill Sergeant James. So by the smallest of margins, one second, British Army Officer James becomes the champion of champions. It's over to Amanda to reveal the result. I suspect she'll be looking forward to doing this. What neither of you know is that, Chris, your time was one second slower than James's old record. OK? So, James, to win tonight, you are either going to have to equal or better your old time of one minute and ten seconds. And you've done it! It was one minute and ten seconds for the champion of champions! <laughs> So there we have it, the series champion is 25-year-old army officer James Scott from Dorset. And what a champion he's been. Can you believe it? That's it. That is the end. All that's left now is for Amanda to dismantle the sweeper, deflate the big balls and empty out the pools. It's going to be a long night for her. So from Amanda and me and Eduardo and Castro. And our series champion, Drill Sergeant James, it is goodbye.